Thanks for staying with us. So uh, it's Tuesday, and usually on Tuesday we talk about health, and it's important that we remind ourselves the issues concerning COVID-19, the fact that now in the papers today we saw that it's confirmed that three people tested positive for the UK variant B117 um, strain that has been very, very, um, that, has, that actually has been quite um, lethal, and uh, we're quite worried about that being in Nigeria. And also, um, we're going to be having a guest later on on cardiovascular damages done to COVID-19 patients. So in a moment, we'll bring that. But I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. The issue with vaccine, the country is working on getting a vaccine. We are getting people support from all over on issue of vaccine. In your view, are we doing enough to, um, to not just sensitization, but where we're, are we doing enough to ensure that people are actually getting healed? Because we have lots of people being sick. Some are passing on, and what reports have you heard concerning those who have actually lost their lives as regards of COVID? For me, for me, I'm worried that you know the government keeps turning deaf ears to Nigerians' worries. So when you ask an average Nigerian on the street, most of them don't trust these vaccines. Most of them already, we have our fears about some vaccines that have gone wrong. We have our fears about some companies uh, patenting some vaccines that we know their history. And you know, are now damaging some vaccines that they are trying to do in the past, cost lives and all of that. So Nigerians generally would rather just, you know, wait, let me just take my chances with the uh, virus. If I survive it, I survive it. People want to know whether if you've survived it, you have the immunity to it now. And our government, they're not doing enough talk around why a vaccine should be trusted, how important it is, what help comes with it. We were having a conversation yesterday, and I just found out that even I don't know the extent of the protection a vaccine would give a person. So I was talking to someone and I was trying to convince the person that when the vaccine comes, maybe you should just take it. The person said, okay, now we have vaccines, three. One from Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and the other one from China. China that brought the Kolo are giving us vaccine. We, by now, government's response to all these worries and all the conversations happening would be, this is our infectious uh, vaccine, whatever company that uh, former governor of Anambra talked about, will be revived. And we'll try our, our chances at producing our own local well, see, we, have, we have to be very careful. At what, what are the timelines we have for that? Let us be realistic. Hey, we need, we need, now. We need for this vaccine. Mima, I was listening to um, the PTF uh, meeting yesterday, and they actually said that they have two vaccines that they are sending for trials. Nigeria has two vaccines oh, that they are yeah, sending for trials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... So they are, are they are our working scientists towards, are yeah. working towards yeah. getting... But the thing is, but the thing also is that we, 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 you can't... Maybe the reason why we've not had a lot of communication on it is because they are still awaiting receipt of these mm. vaccines. Maybe when we now have the vaccines in our custody, we can now begin that, making that coming, making people understand why they must take it. Yeah. I know some governments have come forward to say they're going to make their own vaccine, um, their, 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 the injections public. So people can see that actually it's not harmful to their health. This is what I think um, being on proactive as a government means that you foresee problems and you foresee the solutions and you start working yes. towards the solutions. You don't have to wait till the vaccine comes for you to start educating people mm. on what the vaccine means. Mm. Does it mean that when you now take this vaccine, you will no longer have COVID-19? Okay. Does it mean that when you now have this vaccine, you can go out without your face mask, your sanitizer, you don't need to you know, carry out the normal, you know, follow mm. the protocols of COVID-19 mm. to mm. protect yourself? Does it mean that this vaccine will bring an end to the pandemic? These are some of the information that the people want out there. We need to understand so you make informed decisions okay i now want to take the vaccine but i know that it will just protect me for a bit give me a sort mm. of immunity but mm. i still need to go through you know i still need to protect myself i still need yeah. to so if you put that information there those people who suspect that the vaccines are meant to kill us will have an understanding mm. that this is just something you do like when you started taking polio for children yeah. and there uh, was the for me okay that's true because that. there are, are information. conflicting information some yes. people are saying oh it's 50 50 percent mm. 70 percent potent or they're they are, they are worried about the potency of, of these vaccines different based on the sources. Like some, some are even criticizing the fact mm -hmm. that it's coming from China. But it's not like China government is not giving us. There are mm -hmm. private companies mm -hmm. who That's are selling big. this to well, us. You see, give their as a country. It, 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 with a lot of black people, not just African, African-American, you know, they all feel there is this conspiracy theory to kill them. that we are all... That Expendable. I know people who are saying, I know uh, the vaccine, if it comes, I'm not taking it all. I mean, I don't fall into that category because me, I need to go and see my child.
once they say you, you, unless you take vaccine, you can't, you can't travel, travel. I will take the vaccine. Yeah. But the, the problem is, how are we going to dispel our minds of this uh, yeah, yeah, conspiracy, conspiracy theory? theory. Aside from the conspiracy, uh, conspiracy theory, YK, um, I'm still worried that we are not equipped to handle these vaccines. They need to be under very cold temperature. No, I heard the... the they said the, they have bought... So I, I heard the yeah. PTF chairman saying we have... He said you have to um, store it at minus 80 degrees. Okay. That they have... That they are ready facility. for it. But they said they have the facility. But they said, but wait now, now. That's in. there uh, are other health. vaccines we take today mm. that have to be in the refrigerator. Yeah. We know these things now. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time. The whole country, mm -hmm. like and our country, mm -hmm. have the capacity so to the actually store these, the these vaccines. That's, you know, you know yeah. when they open one BCG, that's why we are not advised to take a private clinic. Right. Once you open one BCG, you have to you use, exhaust, you it. exhaust it immediately. So, so, and they will bring it in a very, very particularized... Uh, yeah. We have to go on a break. Let me really come back, because we're, we're still on COVID, but it's important for us to talk about the issue of the va va cardiovascular problems that COVID, COVID patients face. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Still on COVID issues. However, we're moving on to cardiovascular damage. So cardiac damage has been detected in about a quarter of patients hospitalized with severe COVID-19 illness. The report also has that cardiac damage can happen even among people who have never displayed symptoms of coronavirus. Fears that COVID-19 can cause the cardiac inflammation have grown as doctors report seeing previously healthy people now falling victim. Join us on the show is a renowned cardiologist, Dr. Falashale Adi. Good morning, Dr. Ali. Are you there? Good morning, yes. Ms. Moreto. I'm there. Good morning. Good to have you on the show. So tell us about the cardiovascular damage in coronavirus patients. Um, I know it's not exclusive to those, these patients, but why is it so... Why is it, why, why is it such a, um, a topic to discuss, especially with cardiovascular damages being done to coronavirus patients at this time? Well, um, it's very important uh, we discuss cardiovascular uh, issues with the coronavirus pandemic because the majority of the patients who died during this uh, pandemic to come from cardiovascular arrest. I mean, and, uh, and one thing or the other was that led to the you know, cardiac arrest and that, uh, that, terminated their, you know, their, that terminated this patient. So it's very crucial uh, we discuss this at this moment. But as a, as a COVID-19 um, patient, or if you're positive of COVID-19 and you have previous heart problems, how do you ensure that this doesn't cause the death of a patient? Well, thank you. I mean, if, for example, I mean, a patient has been diagnosed to have hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, and all the uh, metabolic or what we call lifestyle diseases, diseases that affect cardiovascular health, then it's essential, it's paramount that at this time, a conscious effort, you know, a proactive effort is made by the individual to ensure that all these metabolic illnesses, all these lifestyle diseases are kept, I mean, they are well controlled. They are, they are, they are kept normal. Your blood pressure is normalized, making sure you take your medications appropriately the blood sugar is well attended to, making sure it is normal. Cholesterol level, you know, making sure it is normal. Excess weight, making sure you reduce your weight to optimal level. And uh, you know, eating healthy, they are all very crucial. This is a time to make a conscious effort, to be proactive, that you stay healthy, such that uh, all those, um, all the, all the conditions, all the metabolic conditions, all the risk factors for cardiovascular health you know, diseases are, are, are kept at bay and the individual you know, is healthy, such that even when the infection comes, you know, the individual can you know, fight back. Right. But most importantly is to, yeah, thank you. 
All right, Ma, um, we've heard that even after um, COVID-19, you know, the people like the, some of the survivors that I've seen have talked about uh, some of the, um, is it tingling or pain? And now they have to watch their hearts even after recovery. So I would like, us to, like you to tell us some of the implications, short-term or long-term implications of COVID-19 compared to the infections in the heart. And um, what, how, how you can start protecting yourself even after you've recovered from COVID-19, protecting your heart after you've recovered? OK, the first question is to make sure, I mean, to ensure that you are back to your normal health after the infection, is to make sure, make sure that uh, you get tested, make sure you, the, the infection has become negative by doing the PCR COVID-19 testing again and make sure it is negative. Then thereafter, just as I said earlier, your blood pressure, the blood sugar, the cholesterol level, the, your weight, anything that you need to do to keep your heart health normal, then it must be done, including you know, having a change of lifestyle if it has not been changed before. If you've been smoking, then you need to quit smoking. If you have not been exercising, then you must pick up a regular exercise to keep your heart you know, in shape and your body in good shape. So all this we continue even after the infection. Some people who say they have pain there or pain there, again, if there are any condition, I mean, if you still have one you know, symptom or the other after the infection, then you must you know, keep up with your doctor. You know, keep up with your doctor. Any detection of whatever complication has developed must be quickly uh, detected and the intervention must be done you know, early, early treatment is important in these kind of issues. Right. And we've seen, people, you know, cases whereby people refuse to come to the hospital because they don't want to catch the infection or they don't want to be exposed again. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the illness, you know, get, get worse. And by the time they get to the hospital, you will not be able to help them. So please, they shouldn't be scared. The most important is what the WHO has said. Keep social distancing, wear your nose mask, you know, and sanitizing, and washing, and so on, you know, all these are, are, are very important. So it must continue even after the infection. Okay, all right. Mm. So, so some as, people as live said, their daily lives with some uh, conditions that would call, I would call cardiac conditions. So for some people, they are hypertensive, they are diabetic, they, you know, they, and they have, and they survive. We have cases where they survived COVID. You know, so what exactly should such people, how should they continue their lives, you know, after surviving COVID? Are there certain conditions that they will have to live with forever? Or if maybe because you had COVID, you now developed other conditions. How do you continue, you know, get treatment or get help? Okay, yeah. okay thank you. I mean, thereafter, after that following the infection, just as I said, Amir, the individual or the patient should ensure that uh, they have a regular checkup. They have a regular assessment with their specialist, with their doctor, with their hospital from time to time. Do not wait until the symptom gets worse. You need to you know, present early, early intervention, early treatment of complications, which can be in various diverse forms. There is no need to fear. This is not a time to fear. It's the time to be up, it's a time to be conscious, it's a time to make a concerted effort, it's a time to be proactive concerning your cardiovascular health. So therefore, if you have any symptom or any sign that is not there before or that wasn't there before and you develop you know, such, then quickly you know, talk to your doctor. Now we also, I mean, we have virtual consultation now. You, don't, you may not even need to present yourself. You can do a virtual cons consultation and then from there, from there, the doctor will know, okay, what investigations or what you need to do. And then you do that. Right. But on the part of the patient is to make sure they have a eating, a, a change lifestyle, healthy eating, you know, healthy eating, right. exercises, keeping track of your of, of the of the of the of the blood pressure and the on the blood sugar, home monitoring. We have quite a number of home monitoring devices. If you don't have them, you may right. need to go and get them now right. and start monitoring your blood pressure. 
but your blood sugar. So right. all those ones, the top okay. things that you, right. need, you need to start doing. What, what are the kind? What are the um, symptoms? And for someone like me, I have an oximeter. Would that help me? That one tells my pulse. Okay, a pulse oximeter, if you tell you your pulse rate and you tell you your uh, SPO2, the level of oxygen yeah. in your bloodstream. SPO2 is uh, the level of oxygen in your bloodstream, in your blood. You know, and uh, it's, it's a guide, it's a, it's, a, it's a good guide as to, well, if, for example, uh, an individual has been infected with the COVID you know, virus, and then you, you need to you, you might keep monitoring your you know, oxygen level, and you start seeing that it's, it's you know, getting low, then you know that obviously something is wrong somewhere. You need to immediately report to the hospital and let the hospital you know, staff, let them check you are up again, and then from there, Know what to do. I mean, chest CT, for example, will become mandatory at this point to see the extent of the, of the condition as far as the lungs are concerned. So, those are all the things. So, as I said, it's better to, to quickly detect this thing early and then early management instituted, not when the condition has gone so far, you know, and then people begin to seek help. Mm, it's you. not the point to, uh, this is not the time. To, 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 to say that at all, it's a time to, to, to shout out, to keep it up with your specialist, you know, and then to also have a regular health assessment, which we do at the Lagos Executive Cardiovascular Center, you know, to do the art check for you, to okay. make sure that uh, why, yeah, why these uh, conditions are there, even if you don't have the symptoms, they can easily be picked up at the level before even the symptoms you know, will come up. Okay. Things me, like All right. Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. So we still have Dr. Falashade Ali with us. As we wrap up, uh, Busy has a question. Go ahead, Busy. Yes, yeah, so doctor, I, I wanted to ask because earlier you talked about detection, early detection. So I wanted to ask, is there any tip you can give to the average person out there on how they can detect if there's an anomaly with their heart rate during this pandemic? Thank you. Okay, yes. Um, detection, early detection simply means when you have the symptoms, when you feel something is not normal with your health, then you should quickly you know, seek medical attention. That is the starting point. And then when the patient comes into the hospital, the various tests will be done. And then whatever it is that we need to do, we, we, we start to do it from there. You know, but mind you, COVID-19 is a new disease to every one of us. So it's an evolving thing in the medical, in the medical world. Uh, how it will go, it will be detected over time as research and more research comes up, which we are also part, you know, partaking with some uh, government hospitals right now to look at what will be the, you know, you know, thereafter, what will be the continuation, I mean, what will be the, 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 the from there, you know, what will be the uh, long-lasting effect of the infection in the cardiovascular health? Right. So we're all new to it. We're going to have to detect it as time moves on. And then, so at this point in time, I want everyone, you know, especially those who have, you know, cardiovascular disease, you know, risk factors, hypertension, diabetes, as I said, high cholesterol level, Please, as soon as you notice something is wrong with your health, you just have pain in the chest, or you have, you know, something that is not there before. You have to sleep, you do not sleep well. Even loss of the work, call it insomnia, uh, uh, sleep difficulties, sleep, all those things can, you know, can, can be masquerading with some cardiovascular, you know, health issues. So please, you know, come to the hospital early enough. Let us detect it and then we begin to manage it right. together. So, um, thank right. you. Okay, well, so, um, because you know there are certain diets that they must stick to, I'd like you to advise what, you, what they should stick to diet-wise. You know, I don't want a situation, like you mentioned earlier, 
activity and all of that. But people, we as Africans, we really don't know what to eat beyond carbs. So mm. are we, should we now, you know, and people are going towards keto. Should we go towards keto? Is it cardio friendly? Or should we stick to what we eat but be careful around the other, uh, or the foods that we eat? Eba. Can we eat eba? Please, ma'am, this guy is the question. Just answer question, ma'am. <laughs> Well, I, I, mean, I will tell you that our native food, they are very good. Uh, what is most important with uh, you know, healthy eating is, for example, the, the, the quantity, you know, the quantity. Mm -hmm. The quantity you are taking in, the, the quality of what you are putting together on your plates, which is, if you want to eat the yaba, you know, a small wrap of yaba with a lot of vegetable sauce. Yes. You know, and of course, the vegetable should be less in oil, less in palm oil, less in you know vegetable oil. Lots of fish, you know, that's not a load of vegetable of of a uh, of, uh, brie or or livy or shoko or whichever of them or ugu or whatever. You know, a lot of them on your plate. It's you know fish is good for you, yes. but small small quantity of you know the the or the panegia. And of course, when you are going to take things like this, you should take them in the daytime. You, it's not good for you to eat late, late. a jam or a bar or the yam flour in the evening. No, it's not. Mm. It's definitely going to you know, affect a lot of things in your body system. It's so it's better to take such in the afternoon time. So that by the time you retire to bed, you'll have uh, uh, better the you will metabolize it you know, away from your system, and then your system will be free. And okay, while we are on food, let me, much, let, much me, let me stay on food for a while, because some of us actually believe that when we eat all these uh, ifu, fuku, pomo, pomo, cow leg, that, you know, they are low-calorie meats. I mean, it's not like red meats, you know. They are healthier. Could you confirm or dispel this, this um, thinking? Okay, uh, the meat of uh, uh, cow skin, cow leg, and, and the rest of them. Of course, they are just, uh, I would just say that they are just uh, high residue items, and uh, they, they, are, they don't have much benefit as far as, uh, you, know, you know, getting something from them is concerned. Unlike if you eat fish, you know, salmon fish, coca fish, titus fish, those ones have added benefit of vitamins, you know, good protein, you know, and and that will do your body system better, you know. Unlike when you eat something like cow skin that doesn't have any product other than it's, you know, just, you know, a bulk, a bulk passing through your colon. You know. So that is just the difference. Ah. It's better to eat things that are more nutritious, more healthy, you know, at, 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 at this point in time. Right. Rather than, you know, eating something that okay. we just don't know, we don't give you any supply of all the other vitamins. What of this keto? This time you need a lot of vitamins to stay, stay healthy. What of what? Keto, keto, because keto, Which they knock out carbs, car carbohydrates, okay. and they keto concentrate is... more on okay. protein and fat. So they lose weight the that keto way. Keto diet is like... Yeah. Is that good? Uh, uh, keto diet is something. The uh, keto diet, if I can get to what you are asking, well, is something to do more like taking more of protein and taking less of uh, carbohydrates, mm. and therefore, at the end, burning out of fat, fat being converted into energy supply mm, because you are taking more protein. Uh, it's fine that it's not the best. I, for once, will tell you, have a healthy diet. That healthy diet includes a diet that is more portion of carbohydrates, you know, a good portion of protein, a good portion of, you know, vitamins that are essential for your body system. You shouldn't be missing any of these vitamins in your, in your, in your diet. They are all essential for your nerves, for the blood vessels, for, for, your, for your muscles. They are all encompassing, all inclusive. Right. And they are, the more they are, there's a minimum daily requirement for all those vitamins that you and I have to take yes. to stay healthy, to look you know, luscious and looking really youthful, right. even at a, uh, if you I are must say, older. I must say, you so, look very young. Uh, 
and luscious. Hello. I say I must say you look very young and healthy. Can you? <laughs> oh, thank you very much, my sister. So that is just what it's required. Right. If you are just walking to just simply say you want to just show down your uh, your your carbohydrates and then you start burning your fat, you're going to lose from some area. Right. Okay. And it's no good for you. All right. Thank Seven you so much, time. madam. We have to wrap it's up at this time. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be speaking with the renowned cardiologist, Dr. Falashade Ali. Thank you so much, madam, for joining us this morning. There you have it. We can eat our if we're wrong. Mm. It's just, just portion the, control. Portion control. I'm just even I'm so happy that I can even eat everything. Okay. Okay. I had I had a the afternoon. I had a Kobe yesterday. Okay, then Kobe is healthy. Uh, and Kobe and um, I had them. Um, yeah. Kobe is evening meal. No, it's meat. It's mainly meat. It's but it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any calories. Yeah. So, it's not cow leg. It's yeah, not cow leg. It's yeah. okay now. Mm -hmm. And I have any meal now after you have finished yeah. working. You know they eat those kind of things, Sha. Kai. Why can't you? You're missing. <laughs> But I've discovered Fashion okra control, without oil, so I've been doing it. Mm. I, I know my husband is bored that White I repeated okra. it nice, uh, a few food. times. I just said I should try it because we are in our place, it's like we have oil. So I used to <laughs> put oil on my life, but I did it and you I liked like it. it. Palm oil. Yeah. It was after I started, it was, uh, it was, I, when I married my husband, I understand um, palm oil. I never used to use palm oil to cook stew. Wow. You know the one I like? Palm oil you know the, the one best. I really like? Is this Igbo salad, Uba? I, make it. Uh, I never tried oh, it. I never tried it. What's that? You have eaten it in my house. How can you say it? It's on national TV. You have eaten it in my house. Well, I never, I never. Abacha, you ate it in my it's house. It's Abacha. It's Abacha. Hey, hey, Uba was inside now. Hey, Uba, you want to do with palm oil like yes, this? Yes, oh my I goodness. I, I know what he likes. Are you sure? Abacha, I know. It's the same thing. There's Abacha, there's Uba. I don't know. I don't like those sticks. Those little, little sticks. Which sticks? I think they're healthy. I think they're healthy. Abacha itself now. I can almost say all Igbo meals are healthy. Very healthy. And the way I can, the way yeah, I can stand the bone, I don't know. It. And now I don't see it again. I've been sitting it every day. Really, the abacha? Yes. No, they are ba hearing you ba supply with the salad. What they do with palm oil? Hey, but you know you should go to one Please, can you make for me? Make yes. for me. Let me be sure I've eaten it before. Uh, you when I'm in lecture, I'm going to let you know. So we invite you. Okay. Over. We have to wrap up now. <laughs> Thank you. Things are talking about food. Hmm. In our way, our way. Please, you know, don't be. Who is in our way? Redeem now. Oh, oh, redeem. Oh, you, you people that do that, that Jesus how Christ does that, that, How does that rub off on us? Jesus Christ did what they did. They do three months. <laughs> now you know. Okay. 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 Okay.